hey guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make these beautiful cropped sleeves or bolero or shrug whatever you wish to call it um this is my very first attempt i did the introduction after i finished this so this is what you expect at the end of this uh, tutorial so i'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to do this I have a written pattern on all my online shops. I'll be leaving the links in the description box below uh, so that you can go and purchase the pattern. So the difference between what's here and uh, what's in the pattern is that uh, the construction is a little bit altered because the written pattern has a very um, more approachable uh, system of construction. Then this, uh, I made it well um, thinking through it so if you would like the written pattern it's already available on my online shops then um, this is the one that you expect from this tutorial but for the written pattern you can achieve the white one but then if you want a little bit more detail for example the shells on the edges of the sleeves you'll find that in the written pattern as well and then the yarn that I'm using is milk cotton, the one on the chunkier side. Then I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. And then you will also need a darning needle to weave in your ends and a measuring tape. So let's get started. You're going to get your shoulder to shoulder measurement. For me, that was about 17 to 18 inches. So you're going to make a chain so you're going to make a chain that runs across from your shoulder to another shoulder but that chain should be a multiple of uh, six plus five chains so i'm going to make a chain of 65 chains um you're going to start off with a slip knot and chain a chain that's a multiple of six plus five So try it on yourself um mine is a chain of 65 and i want it to be a bit on the loose side i believe um this yarn is going to shrink a bit so it may be a bit tight if i make it uh, very ex exact when it comes to the sizing so you're going to prepare for a double crochet and you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook so one two three and into the fourth you're going to place a double crochet and then double crochet into the next chain then you're going to chain five skip three chains and into the fourth chain you're going to place one double crochet and one double crochet into the next two chains so that makes a total of three double crochets chain five skip three chains one double crochet in each of the next three chains so we're going to repeat this all the way across you're going to continue to skip three chains and then uh, one double crochet into the next three chains chain So when we are coming to the end of our row, we are going to skip three chains and into the last three, 
you're going to place one double crochet into each to finish up your row one and this is what we'll have now we're going on to row two and we're going to chain you're going to make a chain of eight and that counts as a double crochet chain five turn your work three double crochets into um, the next chain five space chain five three double crochets into the next chain five space and we are going to repeat this all the way across and I'll show you how to wind up your row continue to just chain five and then three double crochets into the next chain five space So when you come to the very last space, you'll place three double crochets and then you'll chain five and then go on top of the very first stitch on the edge of the previous row and place one double crochet and that marks the end of row two. Now we're going on to row three and we're going to chain three, turn our work place two more double crochets into the very first space to make a total of three double crochets into the very first chain five space so after this you're going to chain five um three double crochets into the next chain five space like that chain five three double crochets into the next chain five space and we are going to repeat that all the way across Alright, so we are coming to the end of our row and we have this space left here. We are going to chain five and we are going to go into the space with two double crochets and the third one is placed into the third chain from the bottom. So you are going to count from here, one, two and into the third. You're going to place uh, a double crochet this ensures that the last double crochet is placed on top of the very edge double crochet from the previous row so that marks the end of row three now row four is going to be the same as row two so we're going to start off with a chain of eight and that counts as a double crochet chain five turn your work three double crochets into the next chain five space chain five three double crochets into the next chain five space and you're going to repeat this all the way across until the end until we get here and I'll show you how to wind up basically we are repeating row two and row three so i'll be leaving the timestamps in the comment section just go ahead and see what happened in row two and then row three as well and you're going to alternate between those two rows until you get the length 
that you want for the front coverage before you start shaping the neckline so um, I'll be continuing with those rows as I build my work and I'll come back to show you how to shape the neckline Alright, so I did a total of nine rows as you can see one two three four five six seven eight and nine And now we're going to start shaping The neckline I'll be doing one side first then uh, I first figure it out because it's my very first time to make this and then I'll come back and show you what I did So I am done working on the first side and I'm going to teach you how to do the same exact process onto this side just like I did here so um, I'm going to just chain one cut my yarn now I'm going to reattach my yarn on the outside edge of uh, the opposite side so just attach your yarn into the very first stitch on the outside edge so that is going to bring us back to that point like we were working here so just assume that you're on the edge here after this last row so chain eight After a chain of eight, you're going to go into the next chain five space with um, three double crochets. Then you are going to chain five, three double crochets into the next space. Then chain five. And instead of three double crochets into this space you're going to only place one double crochet in there so this is going to help us uh, determine how wide the neckline is going to be so you can make it as wide as you want but mine is going to be this wide now um, if I'm to measure for you guys the neckline is about eight inches without being stretched and when we stretch out you can see this it goes to about 11 to 12 inches so we are going on to our next row and we are going to chain three turn our work plus two double crochets into the chain five space to make a total of three double crochets then you're going to chain five um, three double crochets into the next space and keep working that in case you have more spaces on this side just keep working until you come to the edge here and you're going to chain five and place three double crochets into the last space so remember you place two and then the last one goes on to uh, the chain three from the base of the chain from the previous row okay this is a bit tight all right so we are done with our second row of the upper extension then you're going to chain eight turn our work and you're going to go into the chain five space with three double crochets chain three sorry chain five three double crochets into the next space so what I want to do here is to just do two double crochets and then the third is going to go on top of the last stitch of the next uh, cluster of three double crochets so this is what I've created you can see our work is moving uh, it's like we are creating a round neck so after this you are going to chain eight turn your work and you are going to 
place three double crochets into the next chain five space chain three chain five sorry and then three double crochets into the last space okay so this is what we have after this you're going to chain eight turn your work three double crochets into the next chain five space and then you're going to chain five and you're going to place three double crochets into um, the last chain eight space so this is what we have now we've balanced what we did on this side onto this side and since for you this was your very first panel you're going to go ahead and do the same exact process on this side and then from there you're going to chain one cut your yarn leaving a long strand because we need to attach these panels after so that's the end of the first panel now you're going to go on to the second panel and you're going to repeat the process from down here you're going to count the number of rows that you have here so for me i have a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so um the number of rows that you have on this panel is going to determine the number of rows that you do for your back panel but uh, the back panel will only have a few decreases for the neckline i'll show you how to do that so just count the number of rows on your front panel minus two rows so since i have a total of um 14 i will do a total of 12 rows of this without any decreases or increases for a total of 12 rows and then the last two rows will be the ones that do the shaping of the neckline so just go ahead and work for your size and then i'll be back to show you how that turned out okay so i'm done with my 12 rows of the back panel and now we are going to do the short decreases on the back to continue creating the shaping of the neckline so you're going to chain three you should make sure that you're, you've ended on an even row that starts with a hole here and a hole here. So we're going to start decreasing. So you're going to chain three, turn your work, two double crochets into the same exact space. So that's a total of three double crochets. Then chain five, three double crochets into the next chain five space. And then you are, hold on, you're going to chain five, then you're going to go into the next chain five space with a total of three double crochets, and then, um, you're going to chain three, turn your work. Then go straight into the next. So you're going to place your three double crochets into the next chain five space. And then you're going to chain five and three double crochets into the next. And then you're going to chain five and into the very last stitch you're going to place one double crochet and at this point we are done because i am trying to get something that is really close to the length that we left behind for our front panel so if you place the front panel here the distance is almost the same as you can see here 
just uh, make the number of rows needed to decrease to get uh, to something similar to this length that we left behind for the front panel. So after this, you're going to chain one and you're going to cut your yarn. And after this, you're going to just reattach reattach your yarn on um, this other side on the outside edge and do the same thing that we just did for the for this side so you're going to count from the bottom into the third chain and that's where we're going to reattach our yarn because that's the top of the very first stitch then you're going to chain three double crochet into the same space two times to make a total of three double crochets chain five double crochet three times into the next chain five space then you're going to chain five double crochet three times into the next chain five space and then this is it you're going to chain three Turn your work, double crochet three times into the next chain five space, chain five, double crochet three times into the next, and then you're going to chain five and double crochet once into the very last stitch of the previous row. So, on top of the chain three, placing my last double crochet there. Then I'll chain one, cut my yarn, leaving a strand to attach. And this is what we have. Now you're going to bring in your uh, your second panel. Sorry, my phone is sliding off the holder. Okay. You're going to bring in your second panel at this point and you're going to just lay it on top of this uh, on top of the back panel and you can see where the neckline is. It's a bit lower than the one for the back panel. So what we're going to do now is to attach the top of our first part of the project. Uh, you're going to make sure So I'm going to just go ahead and attach this using a darning needle. So this is all that we're going to do right now. Um, just align your work and find the best spot possible to join the two panels together. So that's it. Um, So this part is finished and this is how the work looks like on the front side. Any side can be the front side so don't worry about that. So this is the front side and then this is the back panel and this is the neckline opening. You can see it's quite wide but that's exactly what I'm going for because in case you want to create an edging for your work then um, this gives you room to do that. So let me just go ahead and join the next shoulder.
So I think you can see why I was stressing that um, your back panel should be almost the same exact uh, length across the shoulder as the front panel. This is because we were going to join them. So if one of them is longer, it's definitely going to be a little bit hard to join and make a neat finish. All right, so we are done and I'm going to just tie a knot here. Okay. So this is what we have. This is the neckline opening. This is the front panel. This is the back panel. So let me try it on for you guys so that you see the progress. All right, so we are going to determine the right side of our work. Mine pretty much looks the same on both ends. And yeah, I think this will be the wrong side. Just choose one side and we're going to start uh, joining the sides of our vest because we first make a vest and then we give it sleeves. So what we're going to do here is to join to join the sides of our work. You can join using a darning needle, but I'll go in with uh, a crochet hook. And you're going to place three single crochets in each row. One, two, and three, all the way up. So we join from the bottom of our work upwards, placing three single crochets in each and every row until you get the opening that you want for your sleeves. So I'm going to join a total of five uh, rows. So I have one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth. This will be the fifth row. And um, I think this is enough for my sleeve opening. I'm going to first try it on just to make sure. I'm not going to cut my yarn at this point. So we're going to start working around the sleeve and you're going to chain three, uh, two more double crochets into the same space to make a total of three double crochets. Then chain five, skip one row and go into the next row with uh, three double crochets. Chain five, skip one row, three double crochets into the next row. And repeat that until you get to the topmost part of the shoulder where we joined uh, the two panels together. So when it comes to this part where we joined the two panels, you can see that we have two spaces here. You're going to chain five, plus one double crochet into the first space, one double crochet into the middle where we did the joining, and then one double crochet into the opposite space. So we have three double crochets, but they're placed in two spaces. Then chain five and continue to do the same exact thing. Just skip one row and then three double crochets into the next row. Okay, um, we are almost coming to the end of the sleeve and what we are going to do is I'm placing my last group of three double crochets into the very last space on the opposite side. So I've worked from here all the way around to here and that is basically almost the same exact as row three when we were working the panels of the of the vest and then you're going to chain eight turn your work this row this row will resemble row two so you're just going to go into the next chain five space 
with three double crochets chain five and three double crochets into the next chain five space so we've gone back to the normal pattern if you're to notice we are back to the normal pattern repeat, repeating row two and three until we get the length of the sleeve that we want now um, I want to work my sleeve until I hit my elbow and then we shall flare it out so just keep working rows two and three until you reach your elbow area and then we shall flare out that um, section Don't worry about the joining part because um, we shall join this later on when we are done with everything. So we are going to have a sleeve but it's going to be more like a panel because the downer part of the sleeve is not joined yet. So just walk back and forth, back and forth in rows until you get the sleeve length until your elbow area. And then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I continue to work at um, alternating between rows two and three until I had a total of 12 rows for my sleeve and that's around my elbow. You can do 10 rows, 12 rows, 13, 11, and that's the approximate amount of rows that's needed to get to your elbow. Now, uh, your work is going to look flat like this. This is my sleeve, it's double and at the end we shall join this lower part but for now we are not doing that yet so you're going to start flaring out your your sleeve and this is determined by this row only so you're going to chain three turn your work plus three double crochets into the first space so only two because the chain three counts as a stitch and then you are going to chain five and into the next space you're going to place three double crochets chain five and into the same exact space you're going to place three double crochets like that and then you're going to chain five and go into the next space with three double crochets so we're going to just do this every other space so that we don't make the the flare so um, pronounced or so exaggerated if you want one that's so exaggerated then you're going to do this in each and every space and that way the sleeve is going to flare out even more so after this I'm going to chain five and into the next space we are going to create an increase so three double crochets chain five and three more double crochets into the same exact space then you're going to chain five and into the next space you're going to place only three double crochets then you're going to chain five increase in the next and the increase means three double crochets chain five and three more double crochets into the same exact space then chain five uh, three double crochets into the next space chain five increase into the next and you can see if I was to increase in each and every space this would become monotonous this would become too much and the sleeve would flare out so so much so I think my decision was a good one after this you're going to chain five and into the last space you're going to place your three double crochets placing your last double crochet into the third chain of the chain uh, eight at the beginning of the row 
so after this this is what you should have your sleeve should look something like this now for the next straw we go back to the normal we chain eight turn our work place three double crochets into the next chain five space like that chain five uh, three double crochets into the next chain five space this row is not uh, an increase row so we just chain five and go into the next chain five space with a total of three double crochets and just do that all the way across And you should notice that your sleeve should start to flare out as you work more and more rows for your sleeve uh, you'll notice a drastic change from the elbow onto the sleeve chain five and one double crochet into the very last stitch and this is what we have and see your work is starting to spread out and now we are going to continue to alternate between rows two and three until we get the length of the sleeve that we want now from our elbow onto the sleeve so the distance between here all the way to here so I'm going to just continue working my rows as usual because we are no longer making any increases and if I fold over my work like this you can see what this is creating we are spreading out the sleeve and it will show when worn so if you want a more dramatic sleeve or a more drastic change then the change should happen around this row where we place the increases instead of placing every other space then you will do every space so um, I'm going to just continue to work rows two and three until I get the length from here, from my elbow, all the way down to my sleeve. And then I'll come back. Note that we are no longer increasing. So we're just working our normal rows, just like we were doing before. Chain three, double crochet two times into the same space to make a total of four double crochets, chain five and three double crochets into the next chain five space and that remains a constant until the end of the row Alright, so from the time that I made the increases at this level, I did a total of 12 rows in order to get past my wrist around here because I want them extra long but not to cover my hands at the same time. So I've done a total of 12 and um, this gets me to my wrist area past my wrist area at least by around two rows so just do the amount of rows that's needed for you to get to that level that you're comfortable with with your sleeve so um as you can see we are on this side we are on the right side of our work so that means i can't join on this edge i have to flip my work over 
so that I go onto the wrong side and that's where I'll do the joining from so just flip your work onto the wrong side I don't know why these colors keep changing this is off white and then the next bow was pure white and then when we come back here I got the off white coming in again but um, I need to do this tutorial to get done we've come a long way so after this um, I've turned my work to the wrong side where we have these single crochets happening here now uh, I'm on this side and I'll just chain one and start joining the two panels together on the underarm area the underarm section so I'm, I'm going to just place two single crochets into each and every row for the joining part two single crochets into each and every row all the way down until the armpit section So I'm joining the two panels together so that we can uh, change the sleeve panel into a tube shape. Alright, so when you get to the, the armpit section, you will just slip stitch into one of the single crochets on the side panel and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn and that will mark the end of um, our first sleeve. So this is how the wrong side looks like. You can see that row of single crochets. The good thing there's a color contrast. There's an off white that I've used for the single crochet stitches and then there's the pure white which is um, the most part of the main body of the sleeve so this is the wrong side and when I turn it to the right side this is what we are going to get this is the section here of course if the colors match correctly and you have the same exact color going on you won't be able to see the distinct difference between um, the edging what is it the joining color and the main body color so this is the right side of the work and this is going to go on the under armpit so this is nothing to worry about because it won't even be seen the main body of the sleeve is on this side so we're going to reattach our yarn onto this side and we are going to repeat the same exact process that we have done on this side so that we get our second sleeve happening here so just go ahead and join here and start creating the panels for the sleeve until you get the same exact number of rows for your second sleeve as you have for your first sleeve so let me just go ahead and do that i'll meet you back when it's time to try on our cropped sleeves all right so we are back and this is what our work looks like as you can see in this photo now we are going to work on the edging around the neckline of the of the sleeves or our sweater cropped sweater whatever you wish to call it um we are done with the main body so you're going to put this away and then grab your yarn and you're going to make a slip knot and make a chain of six 
so after your chain of six you're going to go into the second chain from the hook with a single crochet and continue to single crochet into each and every chain and at the end of this row you will have a total of um, five single crochets as you can see we have one two three four and five because the sixth chain was a turning chain so after this you're going to chain one turn your work single crochet into the back loop only so we go into the back loop like that and single crochet and continue to single crochet back loop only into all the remaining stitches okay so we have this and this is going to create a ribbed effect chain one and single crochet back loop only into each and every stitch so each row is going to have a total of five single crochets worked in the back loop and you're going to continue to do that i don't know how many rows that i'm going to do but the way to determine the number of rows that you'll need for this ribbing as you can see we have that ribbing effect on both sides of our edging and to determine how many rows that you will need for your cropped sweater you're going to count um, each space so we have three stitches here this counts as three and then we shall place three rows of the ribbing into each and every space so you're going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and then you count the rows on the side 14 15 16 17 um, 18 19 20 and then you come back to this side 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and then on this side 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 so we have a total of 36 around the neckline of my sweater so you're going to cal calculate um 36 times 3 and i will need a total of 108 rows for my ribbing i hope you understood how to get that just count um, the number of clusters and the number of spaces and the number of rows on the side of the sleeves um, you're going to count all those times three because we are going to place uh, a total of three rows into each and every space and into each and every row on the side so uh, let me demonstrate that for you so I have my ribbing here I don't know how many rows that I did I just continued working so I just don't know how many that I did but I'm going to demonstrate how you're going to attach your ribbing onto the neckline of the sweater so I got a smaller strand of yarn of white because that's what I'm going to use to attach my ribbing onto the neckline so um, I'll start from anywhere so let me just start with this from this corner let me just start from the back so I told you we shall be uh, attaching three rows of the ribbing into each and every space and into each and every row and into um one two three one row per stitch of these clusters here so into this space i'll go in with the first row and attach two times like that 
and then into the next row which is this one I'll attach into the same space and into the next row so that's a total of three rows attached into this first space then go into this stitch this is one row this into the next row and the next stitch into the third row like that and then go into the next space and attach one two and three rows and then move on to the stitches one two and three so that's all that we are going to do all the way around let me just work across here one two and three and this edging is optional you don't need to do it i just felt like uh, it would give it a little bit more uh, finish and just that extra final touch but if you don't need it there then you don't need to do this So you can see the effect that that is creating. It's giving us a more finished touch as opposed to leaving our work hanging like this. Okay, so I'm done working across here. Now I'm going to start joining the rows and we do the same exact thing. Into the first row, you're going to join a total of three rows into the same exact space. Two and three. And then you go onto the next row and join a total of three rows of the ribbing. Go into the next row. And do the same so that's what I wanted to demonstrate so that you guys don't get confused we just continue to do the same exact thing So we are done with the side here. This is what we have so far. This is how your work should look like. I think I'm more pleased with this finish. Now uh, we are going to go onto the front side and do the same exact thing that we did for the back side. One, two and three and then into each stitch here we place one row of the ribbing
okay so after going all the way around um at this point and i've joined three rows into each stitch of each cluster and each space around and you can see what that has created and now um, after this you are going to cut your yarn i just tied a knot to the very first chain that i left behind while joining with the thin yarn and then um, with this chain that I left behind after doing the number of rows that I needed for my ribbing, I'm going to use that same exact chain to join the ribbing together into a round. As you can see, this is split. So you're just going to go onto the wrong side and you're going to join that panel together so that it doesn't create a weird and awkward opening. Okay, so after that, I'll just remove that and then make a knot with the very first chain that I left behind after making my slip knot. And I'll cut my yarn. So let's see what that has created. Um, uh, this is the back side. As you can see, it's higher. And when you turn it to the right side, you can see the neckline is a little bit on, uh, lower than the one at the back. That's because we did more side panels on the front panel uh, than the back panel. So uh, this is what we have. Now you're going to turn your work onto the wrong side and get rid of all your loose strands. And that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you the final piece and yeah that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and i will see you in my next video bye